I'm Susan Levin. I'm a registered dietitian for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And I have been eating a vegan diet for 18 years now. I adopted a plant-based diet a long time ago for ethical reasons. I didn't like the way industry treated animals. But when my health changed, my body changed, I became very athletic and energetic. Um, I moved to New York City. I was very surprised to see how many of my journalism colleagues, which is the profession I was in at the time, were on medications for upset stomach, depression, you name it, they were on a drug for it. And I was advocating, oh, you should try a vegan diet uh, to no avail because I was just more considered a fringe, uh, avid reader about nutrition. Um, so I decided I needed to go back to school and get some kind of uh, conventional uh, accreditation. So I started all over. I went to Hunter College in New York and got my um, basic classes, biology, anatomy, chemistry, uh, applied to grad school, master's in nutrition, became a registered dietitian, and then burst out onto the scene again, yelling and screaming about how healthy a plant-based diet is because I know what it can do for someone like me who wasn't necessarily sick, but, you know, I had kind of an American body and an American lifestyle. I grew up in Alabama on a typical Alabama diet um, with no nutrition knowledge or bases at all. So I'm very excited. I just feel like everyone can have control over um, his or her health completely. And that's really precious information. It can be scary, but it can be very empowering. Um, it's so simple. I'm kind of ashamed that there's an actual profession for this because it is so simple. It's just eat, eat real food, eat healthy food, um, eat all you want. There's no portion control, there's no calorie counting. Do it the way you see animals doing it in the forests. Um, it really is that easy. So that is my whole goal in life is to get people to realize how much power they have for their own health and well-being. So enter into the scene, a vegan new dietitian. Um, I found this organization in Washington, D.C. that hires vegan dietitians, perfect fit, and now I'm able, on a larger scale, as opposed to um, a clinical setting, I'm able to advocate to the federal government, to hospitals, uh, to schools, that they need to be serving and using this diet to help people prevent all of this damage from happening in the first place. So it's an exciting profession. It's a little bit frustrating, but I'm still very determined to have every single person in this world understand how much power um, he or she can have and then choose what path they wanna take from there. Adopting the diet is simple, but you have to first get through your cultural biases that maybe how you were raised. Um, again, like I said, I was raised in Alabama, uh, not just on a Southern diet, but on a very processed diet. I was a latchkey kid. I came home and ate macaroni and cheese and a can of tuna. Um, so overcoming that, if you're not going to eat that, suddenly it's hard to picture what you are going to eat. So you're taking away, but what are you adding? Um, so you have to get over that. You have to get over uh, what you're seeing on TV, what you're seeing um, in ads, these, this bombardment of information about whether it's how drugs can handle your problems. Um, you know, even when diet and exercise don't work, you can still take this drug. Well, what diet are you talking about? Um, and then all the ads for the different processed foods and products that make us sick in the first place and having to overcome, to come overcome those obstacles as well. But I think, and then finding the right practitioner to help you, or it doesn't even have to be a practitioner. It could just be a friend. It could be a book. Just getting that information in your hands so that you can get started with your life. So I've been in Washington, D.C. now for over eight years working at the Physicians Committee. Um, the amount and the variety of work I've gotten to do has been astonishing to me from conducting clinical trials in the office, so randomized con controlled trials with patients who have diabetes, patients who are overweight or obese, um, watching them find health. So maybe it's a diabetes trial, but suddenly their rheumatoid arthritis disappears. Or perhaps it was a weight loss trial, but suddenly um, no more erectile dysfunction. So watching these individual cases, then being able to publish them so that the whole world can find out about it has been very inspiring. 
um, media aspect to nutrition. I never would have, although I was a journalism major originally, I never would have guessed there would be so much involved in basically the marketing of healthy nutrition because um, as we've discussed a lot here at the McDougal Weekend, uh, there's no money necessarily in health. But, uh, but you have to compete with all these companies that do have a lot of money. So getting that message out there any way you can has been sort of a rally cry of the physicians committee. So doing media stories, responding to media stories. Um, I've done a lot of interviews. I, I never would have guessed that would be a part of my nutrition career, but it's been a very big part and a very exciting part. One of the biggest problems to me is how afraid everybody in government or in power is to say what actually helps. Everybody says what's very safe. Exercise more, you know, get a hula hoop and do some hula hooping, have some more fruit, plant a garden. These are all really, really lovely, sunshiny things, but they're not gonna solve the problem. I would love to have somebody um, as a Surgeon General or, or in somebody in power who could actually say what's right. I'm tired of people dancing around uh, what people are supposed to be doing in order to be healthy. I would tell people what they're not supposed to eat because right now no one tells people what they should not be eating because it makes people very uncomfortable. It gets industry very upset. It gets Congress very upset. We need somebody who doesn't care. Somebody who doesn't care about being reelected. Somebody who doesn't care about industry funding to get up there and say, don't eat meat, don't eat eggs, don't drink milk, don't eat dairy products. Eat, yes, eat fruits and vegetables and beans and whole grains and you don't need chicken and you don't need fish and you don't need uh, red meat products. So. There's a lot of honesty that's missing, a lot of bluntness that is missing, and I don't think you turn around the Titanic, which is what our healthcare right now and, and our um, health situation is in this country, by making tiny little adjustments. You absolutely have to just grab the wheel and turn it around. I'm a dietitian. I don't care how my dietary advice, which is evidence-based, affects the economics of a particular industry. Um, I get calls all the time saying, how can you uh, say dairy products are bad? Do you know how much dairy products fund the state of New York or Pennsylvania or California? I don't care, I'm not an economist, I'm a dietitian, and if I start filtering my information through your financial situation, then I'm not a very reputable dietitian anymore. Um, so take industry off the plate. I would put all this out there and not worry about being reelected because you have to live honestly. And that's definitely a huge thing that's missing in Congress is in the meetings that I have with people on the Hill, it's like, yes, yes, you're right, but I'm a dairy state, or yes, yes, you're right, but this is a pig farming state. Like, take that out completely and just start doing what's right for people and not what's right for your reelection campaign.